Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to start the meeting. This is City Council regular meeting, November 24th, 2020. The time is 7.06 p.m. Yeah. Um, Madam Clerk, could you please take roll call? Um, yes, I'd just like to remind the council members to state the city that they're located in as well as the state. Um, Dave Abdallah? Here, Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Uh, Bill Bazzi? Here. Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Robert Constant. Here, Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Denise Malinowski Maxwell. Here, Dearborn Heights, Wayne County, Michigan. Ray Muscat. Here, Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Tom Wenzel. Here, I am in Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. At this time, I'd like to have Councilman Wenzel lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, of America. And, to and to the republic, the republic for, which for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're not going to be Next, we have the agenda approval. Madam okay. Chair. Councilman Abdella. I move that we approve the agenda uh, in the order of business November 24th, 2020, electronically held regular meeting of the Durban Heights City Council virtual meeting as outlined in item three. Support. Support. Supported by Councilman Constant. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have approval of minutes. This is the minutes from the electronically held meeting on November 10th, 2020. Madam Chair. Councilman Constant. I move the minutes from the electronically held regular council meeting of November 10th, 2020, as set forth in item 4A, be approved. Support. Supported by Councilman Muscat. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Next we we have public hearing and comment on agenda items. Um, I ask that you limit it to two minutes and state your name. Go ahead, please. At this time, I don't anybody wanting to comment let's move on next yeah, we one, have fund Council transfers Chair. and current claims Council Chair you had one peak person raised Council Chair you have one. Oh, I'm sorry yeah. I'm sorry I just seen this my internet's going in and out I'm sorry um, Mr. Blackburn go ahead please he's muted oh. I believe Hassan is saying he should be good to go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, this is about uh, item 11B. Um, I'm trying to understand what the uh, what the resolution's for and why that much money, that is more money than what a treasurer or the mayor makes in a month. And... Um, was there a budget amendment for this? I would like some more clarification, please. Oh, I'm sorry, we're not able to respond during public hearing and comment on agenda items. <clears throat> That's fine, but at the time I'd like to hear some uh, um, some uh, yeah. backup on that, please. Anybody else can do it? Okay. Any further comment on agenda items? Um, Mr. Hassan, let me unmute you. I didn't see that. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Hassan Shami. I'm the owner of the Terry Melt, a restaurant in Dearborn Heights. Um, I want to speak regarding 11A, outdoor patio seating. I just want to let you guys know that um, the temporary permit that I was granted this past summer saved my business. Uh, also saved the businesses in the area as well. 
uh, outdoor patio is much needed um, during this COVID pandemic. Um, and also I, I do, I am a pharmacist as well. And I have a pharmacy in the city. And I also want to mention that with the vaccine coming out, there's still going to be restrictions on how we operate. I was hoping you guys can extend the oh, COVID patio seating yeah. for the future for permanent, uh, so, permanent sorry. around. Wait, Lynn, I think we hear you too, just FYI. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Hassan. I'm sorry. I'm not sure if you guys heard me or not. No. Yeah, we did. Just to briefly reiterate what I said, I'm an owner of a restaurant in Dearborn Heights. The temporary permit that I was granted for patio seating saved my business during uh, this pandemic. If it was, if I didn't have the patio, we probably would have closed down our business. So. I want to thank the city for allowing this to go through and I'm hoping that you guys can extend this for permanent seating because although the vaccine is coming out, as a pharmacist, I also know that this pandemic will stay, there will be restrictions uh, in the future and there's going to be many people who are still worried to sit inside of uh, restaurants and small spaces. So I'm hoping that you guys can approve and um, extend the, uh, the, the permits for uh, patio seating. Thank you. Any further public comment at this time? Let's move on. So we're Next. Here, so has one. Oh, wait, where is he? Can somebody on mute him? Good evening again. I have written a letter to the chairperson of the city council, the controller, and I believe the clerk and the mayor, asking when I was a treasurer for Mr. Riley, John Riley, to help me six hours a week at $35 an hour. And if you decide to approve uh, 11B, I am willing to do the same thing even I am willing to help Lisa for free. I put one month of my time before I was appointed to be trained. I'm willing to put as much time for her free of charge to the city just to help her get into the position and to succeed. So I'm not there for the money. Actually, I lost lots of money being a treasurer from my business and lots of people know that. So whatever you decide, uh, I am willing to do this for free even, not for the money. And just for those people who wonder, I used my car, my gas for five months. I never submitted mm -hmm. mileage to the city. So just, uh, I hope you recognize that. Thank you. Next we have Tre Treasurer Hicks Clayton. <clears throat> Hello, thank you, uh, Madam Chair and Council. I would like to also uh, speak on 11B briefly. Um, that particular account that we're talking about, where the that's a revenue account. So yes, there would have to be a budget amendment to the Treasurer's um, office through part time. You know, if it's what we're looking at the Council, I do appreciate your consideration. Thank you, um, Mr. Abdelhawk for your support as well You're as welcome. Mr. Riley. You both have been phenomenal along with the staff here, getting acquainted. There's not a manual on um, you know, getting transitioned, but we're working through everything. And I appreciate everyone's help with that. Um, I did check with our deputy treasurer because we were concerned about time off and the holidays, but it does look like that she will, after this week, will be here without time off until next uh, spring. So we're good with that. But again, I think it is good to have some um, advisement as it is a transition, and I do appreciate that. Um, I do want, I want to add that I think the $35 an hour is fair because that's what we, um, as a council or as a, a municipality, pays John Riley as well as former clerk Walt Prashevitz, I believe. And that was in a consultant capacity during the transition as a, we've seen a lot of changes with our city this year. So that is all I wanted to say. All right, thank you.
Okay, at this time, we will move on. Next, we have consideration, I'm sorry, next we have fund transfers and current claims. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. I move council approve item 61 through 640 as outlined. Support. Support by Councilman Bazzi. Is there any discussion? At this time I see Mrs. Laszlo has her hand up. Is there any discussion in regards to this item? That's for city council people, eh? Yeah, well, okay. At this time, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have consideration of bids. This is Fire Chief Brogan bid award for EMS jackets and boots. Madam Council Chair. Councilman Bella. Okay. Um, I move that we concur with our Fire Chief David Brogan, who's requesting permission to accept bid for the Phoenix Safety Outfitters jackets and boots. And the bid came in at $31,331.25. This will be paid for through the CARES funding from CDBG, payable upon receipt. And he's also requesting that all bid de deposits be returned to unsuccessful bidders. Uh, and this is as outlined in item 7B. I'm sorry, Support. 7A. 7A. Support. Denise, you got it. We froze up. You froze up on us. Here's also chair. Support. Support. Okay. Support by Councilman Bassey. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Councilman Bassey. Um, I have a question. Uh, so in uh, mm -hmm. the the bid sheet, okay, I have two questions. One, it says U.S. The Patriot Tactical. Okay, that was disqualified. Uh, why were they disqualified? I guess that's my first question. Okay. <clears throat> I think that the chief is uh, muted. Let me in, can I? That's okay. Okay. Ahead, please. Uh, you know, I know they, they didn't uh, include a bid deposit. I'm not sure if that was uh, when they evaluated. I think that that was something that was required. That, oops. Okay. And, and, that's what uh, caused them to be disqualified. Okay, this, so when you mentioned, uh, when it's mentioned in the, in the, bid, the bid sheet, it says that, uh, uh, I mean, I realize, you know, you want the top, the, the best equipment, obviously, but so you're comparing Phoenix versus Alley uh, company, right? Not US Patriot, right? That's right. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. Next we have Police Chief Myers bid award for Justice Center HVAC Service Maintenance Agreement. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. I move City Council concur with uh, Chief Myers on approving the maintenance agreement with um, Johnson Control as outlined in 7B. Support. Board by Councilman Bazzi, is there any discussion? Uh, Madam Chair. Councilman Bazzi. Uh, yeah, I just want to uh, thank uh, Chief Myers. Uh, I had I had a few questions, but uh, he was able to uh, answer the, the questions. He sent me the bids that I requested. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Next, we have Police Chief Myers' request for bids for commercial ultraviolet sea lights. Madam Chair. Councilman Abella. I move that we concur with our Police Chief Mark Myers, who is um, uh, requesting bids to go out for the following equipment by specification, commercial ultraviolet sea lights. Um, and these lights are to be installed in each of the five rooftop HVAC units at the Justice Center. It will be funded by CDBG grants and is considered for personal protection equipment and will be paid by the grant funding. And this is as outlined in item 7C. Support. 
Support by Councilman Bazzi. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next from reports of from mayor, we have a veto of motion related to resolution of the Dearborn Heights City Council to direct the city treasurer to establish separate bank accounts for the city restricted and assigned corporate funds. At this time, I will ask Madam Clerk to read our charter. Section 7.13 veto by mayor. The mayor shall have the power of the veto of resolutions and ordinances passed by the council provided that the said veto with the mayor's reasons in writing must be filed with the city clerk at least 24 hours before the date of the next regular meeting of the council, at which said meeting the clerk shall present such veto or vetoes to the council. The council may only at said meeting reconsider the vote at which such proceedings were passed and adopted, and if it so elects, may only at said meeting readopt such proceedings by a five-sevenths vote of all the members elected in which event the veto shall be overridden and it will bar the right of the mayor from any future vetoes of the proposed legislation. Such proceedings shall then become effective on the this following- This time I'd like to reintroduce for possible- Go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Almost done. <laughs> Following day succeeding such meeting of the council and ordinances so passed shall become effective immediately thereafter upon publication. Yes. Oh, thank you. All Sorry, right. It, no problem. When you hesitate, I thought you were at the end. Yeah. At this time, I'd like to reintroduce for possible reconsideration of approved motion 20-388 Resolution of the Dearborn Heights City Council to direct the city treasurer to establish separate bank accounts for the city restricted and assign corporate funds. Second. Okay, Councilman Bazzi, you support it? Do I hear a second? I support need a motion. We need a motion and a second. Okay. Councilman Bazzi, um, motions it. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Councilman Muscat, is there any discussion? Council Chair. Councilman Muscat? You know, we, we went through this with um, Martin, and I'd like to know if we could ask the mayor, what did he do before he had the $2 million sitting there to make ends meet? Do we or do we not have enough money? And by passing, if we overturn the mayor's veto, that doesn't mean we're going to move the money. It's just going to give the ability to the treasurer to move the money, as far as I know. And if I if, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but that's um, two million dollars, and, and and it seems like you know we're always told there's four, five, six million dollars in our in our account, and I mean if we take two million dollars away, we're we're not going to make ends meet. So obviously we don't have the money. Uh, let me let me address that. Uh, Please. To your first point, this resolution directed in the determine on page two, it says that the city treasurer deposit the two million dollars assigned to the general government retirees health care in the city general fund 115 trust fund bank account as approved by city council. So it would automatically if you if my veto is not upheld, it will automatically transfer the two million. I think as the discussion came about, I think you don't want to make that transfer, but rather talk to uh, the auditors, talk to John Riley. Let's talk about a smaller amount. What we had to do is when you looked at the fund balance and how low it was, that if you you would remember this because you've been on the council for a while, but John Riley would come to the council in February and March and say, we need to set up loan arrangements with the water and sewer fund, with the library, because I'm going to run out of cash as a, as a treasurer. And so that's how we funded the shortfall. We finally got to a point where we have a cushion of cash that this year we did not need to do a borrowing. However, we came very close. If you recall, John Riley indicated that if we did not get that money from the Wayne County 
then we would have had to borrow money. So he set up the arrangement for the borrowing and that cost the general fund money. So I'm trying, uh, what we're trying to do, and that's why John Riley got up at the last meeting and was pointing out that this is not fiscally sound. Give yourself, give ourselves the flexibility. Anytime during the year, if you wanna relook at this in six months and say, here's our balance, uh, um, an amount can get transferred. But I would, I would say that if this resolution that was approved at the last meeting is, and my veto is not upheld, you've lost the 2 million. I would say the treasurer has got to uh, transfer the 2 million because that's what was in the resolution. It takes that flexibility away, forces us probably to borrow money in the spring. And uh, I'm, that's what I'm concerned about. Well, Council Chair, as I'm reading this, it just says the city treasurer to establish separate bank accounts for city restricted and assigned corporate funds. It doesn't say anything about they're going to move them, as yeah, far look, as I know. Look at page two. Look, the, the results don't mean anything. Look at page two to determine. Although I would use a different term, but that is uh, normally in a resolution, it would say, be it resolved, be it resolved, be it further resolved. And, and look at item number three. It, it, the council instructs the treasurer to deposit the $2 million into the 115 trust fund bank account. So if you, you approve this motion, if I hadn't vetoed it, the 2 million would have gone automatically in the public trust. I'm trying to give us the flexibility, councilman. I, and I understand that, but you know, I put myself in a position of, of the employees who count on having health care 20, 20 years from now. And if it was me, I, I wouldn't like somebody playing with the money that's set aside for my health care. That's well, my main concern. Well, okay. let me let me uh, indicate to you that we have the state required us to come up with a plan to do these the health care legacy costs. We submitted the plan last year and it was approved by the state. And we're gonna make those payments. What you really have is an extra reserve to make sure that we have money available to make that payment. Let's say next year, I mean, we still have COVID, the economy, most of the restaurants are only on carry out. There's, there's a lot of concern about what will be next year's funding level for the city. This having this money here means that we could make the next couple of years payments and not uh, have a difficulty meeting our obligation on the legacy costs. And we're we're in fine situation, but to to just make this transfer, in my opinion, is irresponsible. And that's why you heard it from John Riley, you heard it from Martin of Plant Moran, and you're hearing it from me. You've got the financial people in this community are telling you that it's not a financially reasonable thing to do to pass this resolution. And that's why I vetoed it. Well, one more thing, council chair, now that we're, we're short one council person, how does the vote still work? <clears throat> you need five votes. Even with one missing. Correct. Madam, uh, okay. Madam chair. I've got Councilman Abdullah, Councilman Bazzi, and then Councilman Constant next. So ju just quickly, just wanted to re reiterate some of these items the mayor mentioned, but my concern with this, just like it was last time, and I know we had a study session with Plant Moran just before this um, that was open to the public somewhere on there. But again, uh, Martin uh, from Plant Moran mentioned that this would not be a good thing for us as a city to do. There's no major advantage to doing this. Um, the only disadvantage we'd have is that we wouldn't have access access to this money. And also, obviously, uh, the administration couldn't just take out this $2 million and go use it for something without our approval anyways. In addition to that, you got... You know, our treasurer, our former treasurer, John Riley, who's very experienced as a treasurer, highly recommended that we not pass this uh, again. And again, of course, you got the mayor saying this, too. I don't see or have not been told or, or been shown an advantage to doing this other than the fact that um, I'm just going to talk about the elephant in the room, the lack of trust 
And that's why they want to keep it in a separate account. Um, other than that, I've seen nothing that can convince me that this is what we need to do. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. And one last thing, obviously, the bond rating. You know, if we have that much less liquid money, that's going to lower our bond rating, which is not a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, next, we have Councilman Bazzi. Okay, so I had, I had the same concern as uh, Councilman uh, Muscat, so I want to echo some of what, what he mentioned also. So what the uh, city clerk, uh, Sinia, mentioned, it's five out of seven, but now we have six. So obviously we're not following the charter. So I don't, I don't know how that's going to work. So the charter says five out of seven, so we have six. Okay, that's one question. So I don't know if... Uh, uh, city clerk can answer that question before I go to the next question. The charter says five, Councilman Bazzi. Oh, it doesn't say five out of seven? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does, but I have to agree with uh, the mayor. Okay. So, I, again, uh, you know, uh, with what was discussed before, you know, I know it was mentioned. Uh, if we, if we look at the audit report that it mentions that there's funds moving uh, between funds and it hasn't been approved by the city council, obviously, that's why we have findings with funds moving. So, I mean, I'm up for this, uh, this, for this resolution because of that. It's because uh, uh, there's uh, obviously there's some instances that we, the council have not approved funds being moved and that's why we need to separate that money. So make sure that the general... Uh, I mean, the employees can have that money as mentioned by Councilman Muscat. Have Martin had a comment on that? Yes, yeah. uh, thank you so much. Uh, I did want to clarify that uh, there's no finding for moving funds like cash between different funds and improperly, you know, in a, like against the budget or anything like that. It was more of the allocations of how much certain funds are getting charged for certain expenses that there should be a more accurate calculation that should be an updated calculation from years past. So I just want to make sure that um, it wasn't construed that the city is using funds inappropriately for purposes that wasn't meant to be or anything like that. If I, if I might make one comment also, am I unmuted? Yes. Oh, uh, yes. The point I wanted to make is the administration, I as the chief administrator, have no access to the funds. Only the treasurer can move the funds from one account to the other. I cannot move any cash at all, period. What's happening? I don't know. I think his screen is frozen up. Might be his internet connection. Who, mine? Yes, there you are. Okay, we lost. Everybody's uh, I was, internet. I, I, I was done, and I, uh, I, I just, the point I wanted to make is uh, I don't have the ability to move funds at all. I have no cash responsibility. That's the treasurer's job. Only the treasurer can move the money, not me. Thank you. Next, we have Councilman Constant. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, four points quickly. Number one, I reiterate my comments about keeping the, the business, the entity, the city operating and, and uh, having sufficient cash on hand, and, and that being of utmost importance. If you, everyone will remember, uh, just prior to John Riley's uh, last day, he made a request at the council's suggestion to do some interfund borrowing and that request was turned down by the council. The council thought that was not uh, fiscally sound or, or needed. Um, also, I understand that some money has already been moved and already been deposited in a separate account, a little less than a million dollars. Thank you. 
does does the mayor or the treasurer or anybody uh or, or was that a separate issue well if if i don't know if i'm uh, You're unmuted. i'm unmuted uh, we we had set up the plan and our um, plan with the state of Michigan, and we did make our contribution uh, into the trust as was required, and we will meet the obligations of the commitment uh, that the city made, the mayor and the council, we both had to sign off on it to the state of Michigan for that legacy cost for OPEC. So money has already been transferred. The exact amount, I don't know off the top of my head. And lastly, the money's been allocated. It just hasn't been placed into the fund. It's we've The city's got a big uh, checking account to balance and a big checkbook to balance. And um, it's it's the, our, our long serving treasurer, John Riley, felt fit that we were we were uh, uh, doing things properly, the uh, uh, money is separate and allocated, but if the city has a, a drop in their bond rating, has bad cash flow problems, I think that's more damaging and dangerous than uh, uh, taking $2 million and setting, a, setting it aside uh, uh, in perpetuity. Thank you. Thank Next you. we have Councilman Muscat, please. Uh, I think my questions all have been answered. Um, At this time, let's take a vote. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Th this is for, problem? what is this? What are we voting on? Yeah. Nine, oh, please. Okay, this is for the reintroduce the possible She's breaking up and I can't. To establish separate bank accounts for the city restricted and assigned corporate funds. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. No. Motion failed. We will have to take a roll call vote. Wait, Madam uh, Chair, if I could interrupt for just two seconds. Yes. Just for clarification, because uh, uh, Councilman mentioned it was 9B. I just want to make sure it's just for clarification. We're voting on 9A, correct? 9A. 9A, yeah. yes, correct. Thank you. Wait a minute. Are we voting on 9A or the mayor's veto? 9A, 9A. is the mayor's veto. Yeah, but we need to receive his veto first, I think. No. No, yeah, we never have. She's doing it right. No, the, mayor, the mayor's veto is 8A. 9A right. is a reconsideration. Right. Right. At that point, we do read the charter. And then we discuss, we reintroduce it, then we discuss it and take a vote. Yeah. Right, on 9A. Yes, on 9A, yes. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Okay, I'm going to have to take a roll call. Uh, where's Councilman Wenzel? He's muted. Okay, at this time I'm going to take a roll call. Councilman, okay. Councilman Constant. Uh, no. Councilman Muscat. Yes. Councilman Bazzi. Yes. Councilman Abdella. No. Councilman Abdella. No, no. Uh, no. No, okay. Councilman Wenzel. Yes. Malinowski Maxwell. No. Veto um, failed. I mean, it's, it's successful. Okay, at this time, we have Council Chair Melanowski Maxwell. This is for the Council Vacancy Publication. Madam Council Chair. Chair. Wait, Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. I think Councilman Abdullah was first there. Oh, I, Councilman Abdullah, go ahead. Just quickly, I want to get a, I want to get a quickly a clarification on the vote. Because there was only six council members that voted. Right. We needed a vote of five out of six to override right, so it. Right. So it fails. Right. And no, the veto is successful. The so veto is successful. Correct. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Now we can go to 9B. 
Okay, now we are on 9B. This is Council Chair Wanda Melanowski Maxwell, Council Vacancy Publication. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. I move Council uh, approve publication for the vacancy left by Lisa Hicks Clayton to the Treasurer's Office as outlined in 9B. Second. Supported by Councilman Bazzi. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. We will be putting out a pu publication for the city council vacancy. At this time, we will move on to 9C. This is Council Chairwoman Melanowski Maxwell. I'm going to reintroduce city council motion 20-131 corporation council appointment confirmation. Apparently there was a um, question last time because the motion failed. We didn't entertain it. So this time I ask that we motion, second it, discuss it, and then go so again. It's produced city council motion 20-131 for corporation council appointment <laughs> confirmation. Madam Chair, your last few words got cut off. Freezing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, you where did you, what did uh, you want? TikTok on. Me to read it again because something's going on with the internet. Uh, Council Chair. Yes, go ahead. Did you just, hear it? Just, just to help you out here. Uh, yes. I move council reintroduce city council motion 20 131 corporation council appointment confirmation as outlined in 9C. Support. Frozen up. Supported by Councilman Abdella. Is there any discussion? Council no. Chair. Go ahead, please. Uh, I believe that. You know, uh, Corporation Council Miyaki has been with us for a long time. It would not hurt to bring forth new names for have new vision. So um, that's why I, you know, introduce it so we can discuss it. We need to have new names. We need change. That's my opinion. Thank you. Madam Chair. Um, so for me, Council Chair, Madam Chair, um, I'd like to see other names as possibilities. I'd like to see what our options are. Uh, I think uh, our council, Gary Miatke, has done a pretty good job. I'd like to see what else is out there. I was not a part of the process when he was originally interviewed uh, multiple years ago before I even got on the council, so it's more than eight years ago. Um, I'd like to see what other options we have as far as council for the, uh, or an attorney for the city council and the mayor. I'd also like to suggest, um, is a possible option uh, because I did some asking around and as I understand it in the court system, in our judicial system, uh, he's doing a pretty good job over there. So just something, just throwing, you know, thought out there, maybe as a possibility, uh, the council Gary Miyake <laughs> continues as a prosecutor and in working in uh, uh, judges or in the court system. And maybe as a possibility, we get somebody else for our city council slash mayor. So just throwing it out there as a possible thought because they don't necessarily have to be completely tied together. So I am open to the idea of listening to somebody else. That did, that's not necessarily an indication of me not being happy with uh, Gary Miatki. I'd just like to see what my options are. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Constan. Thank you, Madam Chair. And briefly, I thought we talked about having a study session on this issue, I think it's we need to have a corporate counsel. Um, Gary Miyake certainly has the most experience. He's the least expensive. Uh, the people in the city know him. The two district court judges like him. But, you know, there's an old saying, if you say no on something, you have to have an option. Uh, so, so if we're not going to have Gary Miyake, then I think it's incumbent on the council to come up Number one, to, to continue Gary Miatki while the, all the courts are closed to the public, the coronavirus is pending, uh, the, the pandemic, the lockdown, and then uh, have a study session if we're going to rebid it, rebid it. But um, 
I think it's incumbent on the council to come up with a alternative, another attorney who is familiar with the city, who has municipal law experience, uh, whose rates are as low as Gary Miatke's rates are low, who has good working relationship with Mark Roberts and Seacrest Wardle uh, and so forth. I, I think the thought is that Gary is too biased and I'm familiar with people or attorneys serving as city attorneys in many cities and, and in a strong mayor form of government, the, the mayor picks the corporation council and that's it's often how it works. And we should not, we should have one corporation council for the city and then he has assistants that work in different specialties, but not having every branch of government uh, having a separate attorney uh, eating up and wasting a, a lot of uh, money on legal fees. Thank you. Councilman Muscat. Number one, I don't think it's council's uh, place to find the attorney, Mr. Constant, Councilman Constant. That's not for us to do. Okay, that goes to the administration. And I like Councilman Dave Abdullah, I'd like to see what else is there. Um, and to, to, to okay this the way it is, only uh, appoints the uh, current attorney. But um, I, I do believe that we should, we should go to a study session with this, have the mayor bring forth a few names and go about it this way. But in the meantime, we still should allow uh, Mr. Miyaki to carry on his duties as the city attorney. Any further discussion? Okay, this time let's take a vote on this. All well, those in favor, say aye. I think Councilman Abdullah has something. Madam Councilman, Chair. you've already spoke. Did you want to speak again? I spoke twice. Well, I, 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 I just want to get a clarification of what we're voting on. Are we voting on just keeping Gary Miatki or not, or are we voting on looking at other options? Because okay. if we see right now, what we are voting on is reconfirming his appointment for another two years. That's what this vote is about. Okay. I um, this was put for before us back in May. Right. Um, it failed due to no you know, nobody um, seconding it, Councilman. Constant did make the motion. It was never seconded. There was some confusion on if we had agreed to it or not. So we're bringing it back to clarify it for everybody. This would mean if we vote yes, this means that um, corporate counsel Miyaki would be re um, appointed for another two years. And we would not be able to see other options. Thank you. A no would mean that the mayor would have to go out and seek other corporate counsel. For the city. Including, just for clarification, including as a possibility, Gary Miatki. Yes. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. At this time, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. Okay. I'm going to take a roll call on it. Councilman Constant, how are you voting on this? Yes. Councilman Muscat, how are you voting on this? No. Councilman Bazzi, how are you voting on this? No. Councilman Abdella, how are you voting on this? No. Councilman Wenzel, how are you voting on this? No. Okay, Melanowski Maxwell, I am also a no at this time. We will refer this back to the mayor to find us a corporation council. Thank you. At this time, we will go on to 9C. I'm sorry, 9D. Madam Chair. Yes. I want to make a motion to refer it back to administration. Council Chair. Go ahead. I move that City Council refer this back to the administration to find uh, other names to be city attorney and uh, do it quickly so we can have a study section and to keep Gary Miyake on as the city attorney for the time being. Why is second? Time, um, I don't think you understand. Um, no. Councilman Muscat, the charter does not allow us to extend it like that to keep them on. Well, we need a city attorney. So, I mean, I if Gary Miyake... Is. I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying, but the charter doesn't allow us to okay, do Okay, I that. move that city council refer this back to the administration for uh, to consider other attorneys, including Mr. Miyake as our city attorney. Support. Support by Councilman Bazzi. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have Chief of Staff Laszlo, purchase and payment of Microsoft Surface Docking Stations. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. I move uh, that we uh, concur with uh, Christina Laszlo uh, to obtain the uh, docking stations and accepting the $262,525 Coronavirus Relief Government Grants Act as outlined in 9D. Support. Support by Councilman Constant. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have Chief of Staff Laszlo purchase and pay <clears throat> payment of BizHub copiers, including paper cut feature. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Okay, I'm sorry, people. Go ahead, Councilman Abdella. I move that we concur with Christina Laszlo, Chief of Staff, well, with the help of Lisa Martin, uh, Lieutenant Lisa Martin of the Fire Department. The city has been awarded 262,525 under the Coronavirus Relief Local Government Grants. The fire department has used 70,000 of this to buy equipment and other, and other items for the firing squad, in addition to computers, laptops, et cetera. And uh, these copiers will have certain features that are better able to manage print jobs. And, and therefore she's asking that the city council authorize the purchase of four BizHub 360i copiers, one BizHub 750i and one BixHub C360i as well as paper cup feature for six machines. And the quote in the amount not to exceed 48,802. In addition, she authorized, she asks that the council authorize payment upon successful de delivery as outlined in item 9E. Support. Support. By Councilman Muscat, is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next on the agenda is Chief of Staff Laszlo purchase and payment of Right Facts Express. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. I move uh, City Council uh, approve the right, frac right Facts Express in the amount not to exceed $7,624. Uh, and I ask that the Council authorize payment upon successful delivery as outlined in 9F. Support. Supported by Councilman Constant. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. All those, go ahead, Councilman Bella. Um, I'm not, I believe that Christina's on. Christina, are you here, I hope? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so I'd left you a message about this. What I want to clarify, and, and just clarify, because in my mind, honestly, I don't see an advantage of this. Um, fax machine seems to be obviously a technology that's very little used in business at this particular point, or at the very minimal on a way out. So why would we have the need for this? And I'm not, I just want to get a clarification. It, okay, a so about four years ago, we um, had a new phone system that was supposed to have fax capabilities. What happened is we were having, we were paying close to $3,500 um, to $5,500 a year um, supporting fax, um, fax lines, coaxial lines and copper lines. So we were supposed to get a fax server feature back then. There was issues between the copier I don't want to say copier people like they had a problem and the phone people, but there was um, many issues throughout the years where certain um, departments could fax with multiple um, steps. Other departments had to get their own little fax, and there's really not a fax solution that's citywide. So Dearborn IT, CBTS, which is our phone company, and Conica Minolta, which is our copier company, kind of came together and came up with this right fax solution. This is the cheapest fax server we could find. We looked through CBTS, we looked through another phone lady on um, Tarek Ishmael who's on the line also tried to come up with another type of fax server. This is the cheapest fax server. We don't get a lot of faxes, but we still do fax, um, especially in the treasurer's office, the assessor's office, the ordinance department. Um, and this is a solution that we came up with. Um, 
I, I hope that answers your question. Well, yeah, I mean, my main thing was, because I know nowadays in business, a lot of people just use scanning and emailing, what have you. I mean, it's not as much. So that's fact. what it'll look like to the end user. That's what it looks like to us. When we get a fax, it's not going to make that do, 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 and like have something come out of a machine. It's going to notify us on our email that you have a fax and we'll have an ability to view it, print okay. it, save it. So it'll look just like a fax, or I'm sorry, just like a scan, but it's actually a fax. I see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. For the discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Next, we have Chief of Staff Laszlo purchase and payment of Cisco equipment for Wi Fi upgrade. Council aye. Chair. Councilman Muscat. Again, I uh, make a motion that City Council concur with Christina Laszlo on the IT uh, improvements. Uh, for City Hall not to ex uh, exceed $4,212.28 uh, uh, with the help of Lisa, Lieutenant Lisa Martin uh, with the bid of $262,525 as outlined in 9G. Support. Support. Supported by Councilman Bazzi. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The eyes have it. Next, we have DPW Director Selmy 2020 Lead Water Service Replacement Program. This is a change order number three, approval and pay request number five. Madam Chair. Councilman Abdella. I move that we concur with John Selmy, our Public Works Director, who has reviewed the change order number three and pay request number five prepared by Wade Trim for 2020 lead, weight, lead water service replacement program. He's seeking approval in the amount of $272,364 and the approval of change order number three, which will result in $436,080 increase in the contract value. And this is the, the main purpose of this is the cost is increases due to another 87 homes found in the field with uh, possible uh, lead replacement uh, needed. And this is as outlined in item 9H. Support. Okay. <clears throat> Councilman Bazzi, is there any discussion? Councilman Chair. Councilman Muscat. Uh, I, I don't wanna bring this up, but I'm going no, no, to. No, 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 Councilman, we're taking, we're getting ready to take okay. a vote. Okay. All mm. those in favor say aye. 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 The guys have it. Next item on the agenda is DPW Director Salmon. Council point Chair, point of, point of order. Point of order, Councilwoman. Go ahead. Council, point of order, Council Chair. I'm sorry. I'm not pleased that someone is using my, my image on their face. They need to be using their own face, not anybody else's. Absolutely. I don't know who that person is. It's not me. That's not me. And that's that's being on this on this Zoom meeting illegally, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, I understand your 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 um, concerns because you are a councilman, and this is implying that you are in here twice, and that's not good. Correct. It looks like they have left the meeting. So at this point in time, hmm. we Gambini. will move on. Um, next item on the agenda is DPW Director Selmy 2020 and 2021 Street Repair Contract Amendment Hard Rock Concrete. Madam Chair. Councilman Abdella. I move that we concur with John Selmy, our Director of Public Works, who's requesting approval to amend the current contract with Hard Rock Concrete to complete the 2020-21 Street Repair Program. And in correspondence with Wade Trim, uh, enclosed as a letter from Hard Rock, Con Hard Rock Concrete honoring the current contract unit pricing with the exception of $2 per square yard increase for eight inch concrete and 50 cents per square foot increase for four to six inch concrete. Therefore, the department recommends that Hard Rock Concrete contract be amended for 2020-21. Street repairs in an amount of $1,807,675 and further requests that construction engineering engineering budget be established for weight trim 
in the amount of $150,000 as outlined in item 9I. Support. Support by Councilman. Madam Chair. Chair, you froze. And is there any discussion? Madam yeah. Chair. Uh -oh. All those in favor say aye. Madam Chair. We have discussion. Okay, go ahead. Cool. Go ahead, Councilman Bill. You were first. Councilman Bazzi. Thank you. So, two things on this. Uh, so, the motion says uh, the street uh, amendment for hard rock concrete, but also we uh, is mentioned for a weight trim for $150,000. That's a lot of money. So, one, I think those two should be, there should be two motions. And the second thing on that one, I think, uh, I, I don't know, I have, since I've been on the council, I have not seen uh, that goes out for bed for weight trim. It looks like we keep going back to the same company and uh, there's no bids going out for anybody else to bid on this. So I'm voting no because uh, this, this should be two motions on this instead of one. Further discussion? Council Chair. Councilman Abdullah. So I had a question for our director, uh, John Selmy, and I apologize because I know I spoke with you a couple days ago, but I forgot to bring up this particular issue. Um, on the construction engineering budget, there is an established for weight trim and a budget of an amount of $150,000. The question for you, or the question that should be made, in my opinion, should be either up to $150,000 or a specific amount. Because at this particular point, we are automatically giving them $150,000 straight up, even if it's less, based on this motion. Can you please clarify that for me? Uh, sure, um, th that's a good point. Uh, maybe it should say in there not to exceed 150,000. That's based on construction quantities and length of con construction. So um, I, I agree with you that it probably should say not to exceed that amount. Okay, so Council Chair, you want me to amend the motion? Sure, go ahead. Okay, um, I'd like to amend the motion um, from our Director of Public Works, John Stalmy, requesting, in addition to the rest of the motion, uh, further requesting a construction engineering budget be established for weight trim in the amount not to exceed $150,000, as outlined in item nine, oh, I gotta get my mouse to work, nine I. Support. by Councilman Muscat. Is there any further discussion in regards to this amended? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. <clears throat> Councilman Bazzi, okay. This time I will take a roll call. Councilman Constant? Yes. Councilman Muscat? Yes. Councilman Bazzi? No. Councilman Abdella? Yes. Councilman Wenzel? Uh-oh. Councilman Wenzel, you need to unmute yourself. All right. No. Okay. Milanowski maxwell Yes. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is DPW Director Selmy, DTE upgrade to outdoor lighting at DPW facility. Council Chair. Yeah. Councilman Muscat? I move council approve the public, uh, John Selmy's request to upgrade the current lighting uh, from high pressure sodium to LED in the amount of $6,222 uh, to DTE for the conversion of 17 lights and also seeking approval to allow the mayor to sign the agreement with DTE as outlined in 9J. Support. Supported by Councilman Constant. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have Emergency Manager Gavin, 2019 taxes for the cap properties. I, see, Council Chair. Chair. Councilman Muscat. I, I don't truly understand what this is. Is we're approving payment or can Someone help yeah, me out here. Before we can discuss, we need to have a motion in a second. Oh. Madam Chair. Councilman Constant. Uh, for discussion purposes, I move we concur with our emergency manager, uh, Lee Gavin, and approve the uh, payment to Wayne County Treasurer's Office 
uh, for the uh, homes that, uh, for the cap properties that were purchased in uh, 2019 as outlined in item 9K. Support. Support, support by Councilman Musket. Now we open it up for discussion. What, I just wanna know what this Councilman really Muscat, is. Councilman Musket, did you wanna be recognized? Yes, Councilor, sorry. Okay. Councilman Muscat, go ahead, please. Um, what is all of this? Are we paying Wayne County the taxes that are due on the homes or what is it? Yes. For the purchase of the, the homes. These are is the it homes purchasing we or the taxes? These are the homes we purchased 2019. They have yet to go to a contractor. Since we had these homes in 19, we owe the taxes to Wayne County. We neglected to pay them. We got advised. So that's what this is for, to pay the taxes for 19 last year. In 20, this present year, the assessor Comer will put these on the tax roll where we'll be exempt paying these taxes. But we have to pay them for 19 and it took us a while. And now every month we don't pay them. There's a 1% charge. Thank you. So that's, that's why if we can get a check by November 30th, we can pay these out in the future these homes still have to go to the developers. We have seven homes, two vacant properties, and one commercial property. So we, we need to work with our uh, city attorney and, and get a contract so we can get these out to the developers. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair. Further discussion, Councilman Abdullah. So if the, um, uh, this is for uh, Lee Gavin, please. Um, so if these were on the books in 2019, what's happening with them? I mean, that's, that's a long time. Right now, as we speak, we're talking about a year, and obviously they had been let go for about two years, therefore, or maybe even three, actually, three years, and that's why they went to foreclosure. So who's maintaining those all these years? And most specifically, after they went to foreclosure in 19, it'd be our responsibility. Are we maintaining these? What are we doing? Because there's been a lot of concerns from different residents in in – and some of these are this near some of these properties where they had rats, tall grass, et cetera, et cetera. What are we doing to keep keep track of these homes? We're maintaining these. We have the contract with uh, landscape for the summer to cut the grass in the winter to do the snow. We shut the water off in the buildings. DPW did that. So when when we finally get a contract and the council determines which developers get each home and they buy the home back from the city, all that expense will be included in there, the maintenance and all that. So, so why, did, why did we not get rid of these in 19? There was no COVID situation. No, we do not. Uh, that's something I've been working with the city attorney and, and we don't have the, the contract yet that we had for the year before 2018. Um, uh, council, Councilor Miyake has got to come up with that and then go before the council and then um, you as a body would determine which developers get each home. Okay, so with due res no, but with due respect, I, I, I'm not satisfied with the answer as of yet because these had gone into foreclosure. We received them, I presume in 18 or maybe early 19. There was no COVID situation at the time. Why did we a, not get rid of them, and B, we continue to maintain them, of course, at our expense, and then C, to potential neighbors next to these homes, because I can tell you, I, for one, would not want to be next to, uh, uh, being obviously in the realty business, I've seen foreclosure properties and what they look like. They're usually not the best maintained properties, to say the least. So with that being the case, why did we not get rid of them in 19? I mean, if we were in, what contract would we be waiting for? And if that contract was not done by, uh, Council uh, Gary Miyake, why not? All I can say is, Councilman, we purchased those in July of 19. We've had them almost a year and a half. The The properties are still in our name. As soon as we get a contract, then we can bring it to the, the council. I, I cannot do the contract, so I understand what you're saying. Well, then with due respect to whoever dropped the ball, the ball was dropped on this then. I'm just calling it the way it is. I, I, this is, I mean, I, it is what it is now, but I'm not satisfied with it. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Miyake has his hand up. Can somebody unmute him? Sure. 
Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, basically, we did not have a program in place for 2019. Uh, unlike the prior time, we did actually have a program with bids and everything else mm -hmm. in place. Uh, there was some uncertainty with respect to how we were going to actually go about doing it. Um, uh, I want to call him Chief Gavin, but uh, Emergency Manager Gavin uh, uh, wasn't quite sure how we were going to end up proceeding. It was unclear to me what the uh, what we were looking at in terms of proceeding with these. And uh, I believe that is what ended up happening. Lee, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, but that was my sense of how this uh, ended up uh, happening, that we did not have a clear notion of what the, uh, uh, the city's decision makers would want to end up doing in this context. Right, Gary, call me crazy, but this is not acceptable because if you've got a program that's done year after year after year after year, you just have some slight adjustments to be made. You obviously have new addresses to be done. And then you go through the same process you did the year before and the year before and the year before, and it was successful. My biggest concern here is people that live next to these homes and they're just left more than likely boarded up, more than likely or potentially with rats, more than likely or potentially with long grass, more than likely with snow left on the ground, and more than likely no picket fence, no dog, no kids playing in that yard. Okay. And then all because we didn't have a program when the year before we had a program, the year before we had a program, and the year no, before actually, that. Actually, we only had a program the one year. one year. But even if it's one, one year, that shouldn't be that much. Yeah, but we start in, we started in March, Dave. Okay. Councilman, so, you know, the problem was is that no one made the decision to buy the properties until around June or July. And then they sprung it that they were going to end up doing so. I don't know. It wasn't included. So the whole basis for the program was based on releasing RFPs in the March time frame, so our whole time frame was blown at that point. You answered it with due respect to whoever dropped the ball. The ball was dropped. This is not okay. Thank you. Thank you. I do have a question: Is any of these properties occupied? Have we verified that we do not have squatters in them? We do not believe we had. We had one family that we are working with until. Uh, we had the developers and that gentleman passed away. So we should be good. There's one home we still got to check. Some people are moving out and I got to see if they're out. So we've been letting them live there basically rent free for the last year? Uh, there's some discretion between the counties on, on taxes. They've been paying the taxes. So we're still working on that. Mm. Yeah, they were the owner. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have Human Resource Director Sabota Perry, 6055 backslash 6056 reporting assistance. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. I move that uh, City Council concur with Human uh, Resources Director Elizabeth Soba Perry. Uh, in using uh, Plant Moran as the uh, uh, consultant uh, for the Affordable Care Act and, and others as outlined in 9L. Support. Support by Councilman Constant. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Councilman Bazzi. Um, yeah, two things. One, um, I have not seen that hasn't gone out for bed. Uh, that's the number one. So uh, it looks like we just awarded uh, this company with uh, no bid, uh, nothing on bid net. And the second question is, uh, I'm, I know there are auditors, you know, for the city. So I haven't seen anything about conflict of interest. You know, uh, it's like auditing uh, something that they, they actually do on the, for, for this particular uh, uh, resolution. So that's, uh, there's two items. So I'm, um, I'm, I have an issue with this one. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. 
this time we need to take a roll call vote. Councilman Constant. Yes. Councilman Muscat. Yes. Councilman Bazzi. No. Councilman Abdella. Yes. Councilman Wenzel. Yes. Melanowski Maxwell is a yes, it does pass. Next item is Ordinance Enforcement and Animal Control Director McIntyre. This is with the Michigan Humane Society Agreement. Madam Chair. Councilman Constant. I move that we concur with our Ordinance Enforcement and Animal Control Director Jack McIntyre and approve the contract, uh, the renewed agreement between the City of Dearborn Heights and the Michigan Humane Society for housing and care of domestic animals and injured wildlife is outlined in 9M. Support. Support. I'm not seeing who's supporting it. Dave. Dave. Abdella. Councilman Abdella. Okay, your, your little box didn't light up. Sorry. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have Park and Recreation Deputy Director Constant, 2021 Smart Contract. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. I move City Council authorize the mayor and the city clerk to sign two copies of the municipal community credit contract for year 2021 and set back to Kim Constance, the Deputy Parks and Recreation Director to attach exhibits and forward to SMART. The city of Dearborn Heights will receive $56,810 of municipal credit monies and $92,475 in community credit monies as outlined in 9N. Support. Support by Councilman Bazzi. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next we have Park and Recreation Deputy Director Constant 2021 CARES Act funding contract through SMART. I can't find that. That's Park and Recreation Deputy nine Director. Oh. Yes, 90. I'm looking on my iPad, I can't find it. I got nine in and I don't have it. It doesn't go to O. I know. Uh, I saw that actually one second. If somebody else can take this, I'd appreciate it. Madam Chair. Councilman Abdella. I move that we concur with uh, Parks and Recreation Deputy Director Kim Constant approving the 2021 CARES Act funding contract through SMART as outlined in item nine I'm sorry, nah, yeah, in item 9-0. Oh. Support. Support by Councilman Bazzi. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have a second reading for Ordinance H-20-03 Zoning Ordinance Amendment Outdoor Seating Regulations Section 36-170. Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. Constant. I... Yes, Councilman Constant. Yes, sorry. Uh, I move that Ordinance H 20 03 regarding outdoor seating regulations uh, be read for the second, considered read for the second time as outlined in 11A. Support. Or by Councilman Bazzi. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Councilman Muscat. What is, what, what is the ordinance actually say? We had a gentleman on earlier. We couldn't respond to him. So I'd like to know exactly what that ordinance and seating re uh, regulations state. Does anybody have that? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's actually, it was uh, section 3170. He made an amendment for uh, seating uh, this is like from 50%. Okay, let me see. It's, uh, if you look at, if you're looking at PDF, it's in, on page 94. Okay, thank you. 
Okay. And this is going to help our, our, our businesses. Yes. It allows it. Sorry. Madam chair. Councilman Abella. So the, the primary change uh, Councilman Muscat is the outdoor seating capacity before uh, the previous one, the outdoor, the, the way it was, the outdoor seating capacity must not be greater than 50% of the indoor seating capacity. Now this allows for that where there's more outdoor seating than there's indoor seating. And the primary reason for that is with COVID, Corona and all the issues that, uh, and the pandemic that <clears throat> we're all dealing with, uh, there's a lot of people that want to sit outside and don't want to go inside the restaurants, not to mention that during this particular lockdown for three weeks, none of us are allowed to go inside restaurants. So they give the, the restaurants, the bars, etc., the option of having outdoor seating provided they abide by the different regulations and conditions of our building department. That's basically what we are voting on, allowing more than 50% to be outside um, for the future too. And, and, and with this COVID thing, obviously the pharmacist earlier stated, this thing is not going to go, well, I hope it goes away yesterday, but more than likely we're going to still be dealing with this this coming spring, at least at some level. And at the very minimal, there's still going to be a lot of people that are uh, paranoid, concerned, or just used to the fact that they don't want to go inside and be around, um, you know, the general public. So I, I fully support this particular. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Chair. Chair. Can we consider this a final reading? Is this uh, the yeah, thing passed? And yeah, we needed yeah. two readings. This is the second reading. So after this, it will be passed if we all vote yes, on, or if we okay. vote yes on it. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. It does pass. Next, we have Councilman Muscat resolution to approve Mr. Abdel Hawk appointment from November 25th, 2020 to December 25th, 2020 to assist city treasurer during the transaction time. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. I move city council approve Mr. Zohair Abdel Hawk appointment from November 25th, 2020 to December 25th, 2020 to assist the city treasurer during the transition time limited to the total cost not to exceed 8,500 charged to the city's uh, uh, year 2020-21 tax administration fees balance account number 101-000-402.999 as outlined in 11B. Support. For the Councilman Bazzi, um, I have to say on this, I do agree that um, Treasurer Hicks Clayton does need help. Um, I'm a little concerned about it coming out of a revenue account. I spoke with former Treasurer Riley, and I understand that we can't make payments out of a revenue account. It would have to be noted as a different account if we do pay it. And also, too, in the past, our procedure, such as when um, former Treasurer Abdel Haq took over, we negotiated an hourly <laughs> amount with um, Treasurer Riley, and I think that's what we need to do on this. I mean, and also too, I don't understand why we're not going to Treasurer Riley in regards to this. Um, I've asked him and he said that whenever Treasurer Hicks Clayton has asked him a question, he has answered it for her. So I guess I'm a little confused on this. If anybody could answer me in that, I would appreciate it. Well, I just figured that since uh, former Treasurer had a different duties now, and uh, he did help out with uh, Mr. Zohir Abdel Haq, that Mr. Haq can also help uh, the new treasurer. And uh, I, I don't understand why we can't take it out of that administration fee balance account since it's there. Um, no different than I guess taking it out of the $2 million to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. Treasurer, former Treasurer Riley on here still? because I did have quite a conversation with him earlier and he explained that we can't take it out of a revenue account. We can take it out of a different account, but revenue is just a receiving account. He is unmuted. Oh, there he is, go ahead. Yes. Hello, uh, I, yeah, okay. 
Um, yeah, I, I just think that, you know, it, it can come out of the, the treasurer's office part-time budget. And um, you would just make a budget amendment to um, uh, facilitate additional funds being in the tre treasurer's office part-time budget to cover that. Right? Council Chair, uh, a, a, revenue, a revenue account is not a, is not appropriate. Council Chair, then I, I move to amend my my motion that the eighty-five hundred dollars be charged to the uh, overtime budget for the treasurer's office as outlined in 11B. Support. Supported by Councilman Bazzi. I have um, Councilman Constant. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, very briefly, um, I think number one, this request would have to come from the treasurer. Number two, I don't know how the $8,500 amount was arrived at. And number three, if it would be full-time or part-time. And appointment to what? It's it's really just a budget amendment. I think the uh, elected treasurer is is able to, you know, within the budget or if the budget is amended, do whatever she wants. So I don't know that it's an appointment to anything. It's just uh, 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 and uh, Mr. Abdel Haq, the interim treasurer, indicated he's willing to do this. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure calling it an appointment is maybe the correct terminology. Well, it would be a, a part-time appointment. Um, I'm sure you had part-time appointment at Dearborn not too long ago. Um, I wasn't it, it, appointed. I was a contract employee. Well, it, it, it's going to be uh, through December 25th. And so that is part-time. This is not going to go any longer than that just to help a transition period. Most people get a transition period and uh, I will let the council people vote on this. And is it 40 hours a week or 20 hours a week or no specified? It, 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 it's no more than 8,500. So if he puts a thousand hours in it, it's still gonna be only $8,500 $8, at the very most, at the very most. Doesn't matter if it's 40 hours a week or uh, 500 hours a week. Right, but and how was the eighty five hundred arrived at that amount? You know, we paid the other deputy, the other person doing a transition thirty five dollars an hour. So you can figure that out mathematically. Well, thank you, thank you. I and I don't know that Mr. Persevich was that was utilized, and um, that's all I have to say, Madam. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, next, we have. Treasurer Hicks Clayton, where is she? We got to unmute her. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> what I wanted to say, I had mentioned this earlier, that this account that's listed here is a revenue account. You cannot pay from a revenue account. We would have to do an amendment to the treasurer's budget, and it would be part time, not overtime. It would be the part time line item. And when you come out to the 8,500, that's, I mean, based on you're talking four weeks, that's over $60 an hour. That's what we had talked about. $35 an hour was fair because that's what we had seen with a uh, former clerk, Prashevitz, as well as with our former treasurer, John Riley. So I think 35 is fair for that. And again, it would be, I thought, part time because we do still have the deputy uh, treasurer is going to be here full time. And I, I mean, I welcome and I look forward to having Mr. Abdel Haq assist because he's very helpful, as, as is uh, Mr. Riley, which I mentioned. But um, I would think part time at, at $35 an hour. And if you figure, let's say, 25 hours a week, you're looking at $3,500 versus $8,500. Or if you do 20 hours a week, that's $2,800. So that's just what I wanted to share with you to clear up some of those. Uh, questions and confusion. Again, this is a revenue account. We cannot pay from a revenue account. I would have to amend the budget for this department. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess I'm still a little confused because um, former Treasurer Riley is still willing to help in regards to the transition. And I don't understand why, you know, he's, I mean, he's answered any questions that Treasurer Hicks Clayton has had. So I'm just confused. I I don't know where I would think that he, I mean, I, I know former treasurer Abdel Haq knows the job, but I think 
former <laughs> treasurer with all the years he was in there. So I guess I'm just confused. Well, I have a motion, and I don't know if anybody seconded it. So I think Bill Bassey seconded it. Yeah. I did already. I mean, she took it down, I think. Madam Chair, okay, it looks like we got internet issues here. Madam Chair, I don't know if she can. Everything's froze. Should I try it? Should I do it again? Go ahead, clerk. <laughs> Madam Chair, just for clarification, um, the former clerk did not get paid $35 an hour. I just wanted to clarify that. Right. I remember that. See, normal okay. procedure is uh, the treasurer would negotiate with the person that they were hiring to transition them and then have a letter sent over to HR Correct. is what procedure normally is. So, mm -hmm. all right, I've got... So I have a couple of questions. First of all, um, I thank uh, our former treasurers of here for serving during the last four or five months and appreciate them jumping in during the time where we had obviously our former John, uh, treasurer, John Riley, had resigned. So I appreciate everything he's done. And of course, I appreciate John Riley, everything he's put in. Uh, I'm really concerned about dollar figure. I, I do believe that uh, the new treasurer would need somebody possibly to help, help her in transitioning. I do understand that particular process. My preference would be to have John Riley, with due respect to Zohar uh be in that particular process because of, uh, you know, the, the amount of experience that he's got uh, put in, and the amount of years that he's put into the city as a treasurer. He'd be my preferred choice initially. If not, of course, Zuhair Abdul Haq, I'm sure, would do the best he can and, and, and help get the job done. My concern is the dollar figure. That's my biggest concern. So who they pick, I, mean, I have my preferences, but at the end of the day, it's up to them. But the dollar figure, which I, I, I respect Zuhair Abdul Haq at the beginning of the meeting for saying that that was not the dollar figure he was looking for, and he even mentioned he would do it for free. So that tells me that this thing is not all about money for him, and I respect him for that. With that being the case, even if you took $35 an hour, multiply it by 40 hours, you're at $1,400. You multiply that by four weeks, you're at $5,600. That's so still quite a bit below the amount of $8,500. So personally, what I'd like to see is a dollar figure per hour. And what is the maximum amount of hours per week that would be hiring somebody for? And then I'd be okay with okaying this motion. The way it stands right now, I would not be okay with it. Thank you. Thank you. It looks like some of the people are having trouble with losing their signals. It seems to be an unstable internet connection out there today for several people. I'm waiting to see if everybody's moving because I, at one time or another, everybody's froze up. Councilman Muscat? No, no questions. I just want to let you know I'm still here. Okay, good. Yeah, Councilman Wenzel looks like he's having problems. He lost his internet connection. Okay, well, at this time, we're gonna vote on it. I see an iPhone Tom in here now. Let me unmute him. Councilman Wenzel, if that's you, please unmute. He's on his phone, come on. There we go. Okay, good, okay. you're there. Okay. Yeah, this time we are voting on the amended resolution for Councilman Muscat to approve Mr. Abdel Hawk appointment from November 25th, 2020 to December 25th, 2020 to assist city treasurer during the transition time. And we did amend that to the part-time budget. Was that correct? Yes. Okay, at this time, let's take a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. No. Okay, let's take a roll call. Councilman Constant. No. Councilman Muscat. Yes. Councilman Bazzi. Yes. Councilman Abdella. No. Councilman Wenzel. Yes. Councilman Maxwell is a no. 
the tie. Motion for motion tie. Yeah, we only have six people. Motions approved then. No. It failed. I, I don't know. It's a tie. Do we want to bring this back again at the next meeting when we possibly have seven people? Well, council chair. Isabella. I'm well, again, my preference is I think John Riley, because of his experience, if he's willing to do it, that'd be the preferred choice. Uh, if we could amend the dollar figure, I'm willing to go forward with it, but not with that dollar figure. I, I move city council move this to uh, the next meeting when there's seven people, and maybe we can uh, tweak this uh, motion, uh, tweak this a little bit to make it more pleasurable for everyone. Oh, thank you. Let's move this to the next one since it was a tie. There's nothing we gonna, can do. Are you going to motion a new motion to move it to the next meeting yes. or to table it? I don't get Council Chair. Yes. Council Chair. Oh, okay. Councilman Lenzo, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, can we add there that uh, we could add uh, John Riley on there as a possible uh, uh, part time? Well, I think you know, we, already, had one op, we only had one option there. I, mean, they can I think what's out. happening is we already have um, a letter of agreement with former treasurer John Riley right. to do that. So I guess that's right. why I was confused. Yeah. <clears throat> Madam Chair. Okay. Um, as uh, Councilman Abdullah mentioned, uh, to amend the motion to include the dollar figure, I mean, I, I can do that. I can amend the motion to limit it to uh, thirty-five dollars an hour, if if uh, if it's okay with the chair. All right. Would there be a number of hours too? Uh, we, I mean, we, we can limit it the amount of hours also. I mean, if, we we can. We can if limit. it's uh, well, I'm sorry, council chair. <laughs> you know we had a motion on the floor uh, in the beginning it was seconded we never took a, a vote and the vote was taken and it was tied so I, I don't know if a tie is either an approval or a disapproval my understanding it's always an approval it was not a majority so that would mean it would fail okay right. it would fail it okay then, that, then, then, then a motion failed yeah. So that is, uh, that's, that's what it is, that it failed. We did take a motion. Now, if there's another, if somebody wants to make a motion on bringing it back uh, with something different, then we can do that. I think it's probably uh, best to wait till we have seven people, um, especially since we do have an option of former Treasurer Riley is helping Treasurer Hicks Clayton now anyways. And if she has a question, he has answered her questions. Madam, Madam so, Chair. Councilman Bazzi. Councilman Abdullah mentioned uh, also that uh, if we amend it, you know, he doesn't have a problem voting on it. And again, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to amend the motion to limit it to $35 an hour and part-time, so 32 hours uh, maximum per week. I'll support that. Is there any discussion? I guess, you know, and our clerk, our clerk brought up a valid point that um, former clerk Prashevitz is only making $30 an hour and he was here for years. So I don't know how we're arriving at the dollar amount of $35. Can somebody it tell me that? Price to me. Well, um, this is for Councilman Bilbazi, and, and, and maybe I'm speaking prematurely on behalf of Zahar Abdul Haq, but I'm sure I can speak on his behalf that five <laughs> bucks is not going to make or break him. So maybe Councilman Bazzi, do you want to maybe amend it to make it $30 an hour? Or, okay, or I make a motion. I amend my, I'm sorry, thank you, Councilman Abdullah. I amend my motion uh, to for $35 an hour, $30 an hour, uh, maximum 32 hours per week. Support. Support. Supported by Councilman Muscat. Is there any further discussion? Madam Chair. Councilman Constant. And that would be with uh, the former interim treasurer, Zuhair Abdel Haq, or it would be with either, I'll say either former treasurer. It's for the motion, Mr. Zuhair Abdel Haq. 
Thank you. Talk only. Madam Chair, I just want to clarify. Did somebody says you have lock only. I, I'm just clarifying. Uh, sorry, Councilman Abdullah. I'm I'm clarifying the motion. You know, thirty dollars an hour up to thirty two hours per week for the motion eleven B, and it has uh, Mr. Zuhair Abdul Hot on the appointment for that motion. Um, one issue with that is our part time only goes up to 28 hours. If we go over 28 hours, they couldn't come out of the part time budget. Okay, we can amend that for 28 no. hours next. That way, we got it correct. I'll, Council Chair, Councilman? I got, I got a, a quick question is, is John Riley still a letter of agreement in effect? I I'm going to unmute Treasurer Riley. I do assume it is, isn't it? I, I, I mean, I would assume it was, but I, you know, that would be, I guess, between it, up to the new treasurer, you know, I mean, that was uh, agreement between uh, Treasurer Abdahak and myself at the time. Uh, it was $35 an hour. Um, during that time, I charged the city one and a half hours, or so $52. So... <laughs> no, you gave a lot more time than an hour and a half, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did. I, there was a lot of time I didn't bill because I wanted, you know, I just wanted to make sure that the transition went well. That that was really the most important thing, and I think that's what Mr. Abdahak was saying at the beginning of the meeting. You know, we just want to make sure that the office continues to operate in the most efficient way possible. I think we should leave the option to, uh, open for uh, our new treasurer to consult uh, John Riley. I agree. Okay, at this time, are we ready to vote or do we want further discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. That, this is to just have uh, treasurer, former interim treasurer Zuhair Abdelhaq, correct? Not right. John this Riley. Is, okay, let's take the vote again so everybody is sure of what we're voting on. This is to appoint former treasurer Abdel Hawk to the part-time position at $30 an hour for the treasurer. Um, do know that we still have a valid appointment with John Riley, our former treasurer before that. So this would appoint treasurer, former treasurer Abdel Hawk. And a vote on yes will appoint 28 hours. And capping it at 28, 28 hours. Correct. All those in favor say aye. 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 That was opposed? No. Let's do a roll call. Councilman Constant. No. Councilman Muscat. Yes. Councilman Bazzi. Yes. Councilman Abdella. Yes. Councilman Wenzel. I am voting no because I think we should have the same agreement with uh, Abdul Hawk that we had with John Riley with a letter of intent and that uh, create a new position. I also am voting no because we also still have a valid letter of agreement with John Riley and I don't think it's necessary to appoint another person since he has the most knowledge. I mean, I know former treasurer Abdul Hawk did the job and I, I respect him for that. But I think the knowledge goes a little bit deeper with former Treasurer Riley. So at this time, this has failed. Let's um, move this to the next meeting when we have seven council members to decide on this. Next item on the agenda, let me see here. Okay, this is comments from council members. Madam Chair. Before I move on, I'd like to say I'd like to wish Pardon. Council Chair, you we froze up on us again. Okay, let me go further. Okay, at this time we are going to open it up to comments from council members. Before I call on the council members, I'd like to wish I'd like to take the time to wish everyone and their family a happy Thanksgiving. Is there any other comments from the council table? Madam Chair. 
I have Councilman, um, Councilman Wanslow and Councilman Bazzi. Go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you. I also would like to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving and a safe one. Um, take all the precautions necessary. And I, I too appreciate uh, Abdul Hawk's uh, uh, help with the uh, transition and his time he spent as, as treasurer. And I'd like to see him also be, um, him, him and John Riley have access to uh, Lisa Hicks, uh, Clayton to, uh, to, to transfer her over to this position. I think they both have valuable uh, skills and knowledge that uh, she, she could use. So when, when we uh, do that next meeting, I'd like to, to have that, that option available. Thank you. Is there any further sure. discussion from the council table? Councilman Okay, um, I sent an email, a couple of emails to uh, the building director, Mr. Domsky. I have not heard anything. So I wanna make sure, um, I know the mayor likes to, uh, to have interactions with, if there's an issue with anything, you know, with or any of the directors to go directly to that person, uh, you know, through email instead of the council. And uh, I just wanna make sure that Mr. Domsky received my two emails. And if he wants, I can, if he prefers for me to bring up these issues at the meeting here, I will. But if he wants to uh, address them via email, I can still do that. So I just want to see what his preference is. Domsky, Director Domsky. Oh, there's the mayor. Go ahead, please. Uh, I don't know what the memos, emails you're talking about, uh, but if uh, Mr. Domsky is on the on the uh, uh, meeting, he can respond. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mayor. I didn't see, see you on it. I didn't want to waste your time. I did send them directly to Mr. Domsky. So I just, just want to make that. sure, you know, out of respect, I want to make sure that we address some concerns from the residents uh, to what whatever bill, uh, department had. I, I go directly to that department head. But if, if I can't get the answer within one or two, you know, weeks, you know, so one of them is three weeks you know, then I guess, you know, I need to address them at the council meeting because residents who bring up these concerns are also listening to these council meetings. So with that, I wanna ask Mr. Domsky, does he want me to address issues related to his department in a meeting here, or he wants me to address them in a separate email so he can address them so I can forward it to the residents? And then he's got his hand up. Go ahead, Larry Domsky, Director Domsky. Yes, I uh, I did receive your email. I did make uh, contact with that homeowner you had questions about. Uh, I thought you were just forwarding the information to me to make contact with them. I didn't see know if you want to respond, but I will respond from now on. Yeah, I, I'll appreciate that. So I know that the issue has been addressed. So if you can respond back to me or any council member if they raise an issue that you addressed it, I really appreciate that. Yes, and I, I, I have responded to you in the past. I just thought that was just a, I thought you were just passing the information along to me. No, because I got two emails from that person. So I just want to make sure, you know, uh, it, it was addressed. Thank you. Yes, I talked to him. Uh, I actually had several conversations with him, I think last week and one today, as a matter of fact. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, next I have Councilman Muscat. Uh, are we doing anything for public announcements or are we just doing the council? Did we skip public announcements? We're at the council table still. Public okay. announcements is next. Uh, okay, then, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, uh, I, I have a few things here. To, uh, first one, I, I believe this will be directed at the mayor. Uh, a few weeks ago, um, he charged our former treasurer with not coming to city council to purchase items. And it's, you know, back in uh, July 28th of 2020, city council subpoenaed records from Plant Moran and from the mayor, Dan Paletko. And it was a list of city owned vehicles, including the VIN numbers and to whom the vehicle was assigned. As of 6.32.20, the schedule of vehicles brought and sold, disposed of over a period of five years with the VIN number assignment. Uh, I then looked at Mr. Mayer's car, whose car is a 2018 Ford Taurus Interceptor. 
city council never approved a new car for the mayor. Sticker price on that was over $30,000. And the mayor provided scanned documents of Michigan Municipal Risk Management Authority listing VIN and license plate numbers for what was under, understood to be all Dearborn Heights vehicles insured through MMRMA. There is no document that exists that identifies the vehicle assigned to the mayor. I want to know how he got a newer car in 2018. I've been on council since 2016. We never approved a new car. So how is this possible that you can go out and spend $30,000 on a police interceptor without council approval? That is, that is totally wrong for you to do that. You also sent me an email after I sent you one, Mr. Mayor, about giving someone a raise without coming to city council. It was a 25% raise. And the, the, the way you worded it, that you normally give adjustments. You don't give adjustments unless it comes through council. Now, I don't understand why you can accuse someone and you, and you hid your car for two years. You bought it in February of 218. This re really bothers me. What else has gone on behind city council back? I've even requested, not even requested, I, I did say that I'd like to see records of gas and mileage driven private. And I didn't want to do a resolution, but you're really forcing my hand in doing that and forcing everybody to do a lot of homework on their vehicles. And matter of fact, they'll be GPS by the time I get done. And we will have an accounting of every single vehicle the city owns. And that's one of my rant for the week. And that's a shame that the comptroller, the treasurer, and you kept that from city council. You all kept it from us. You went out and got another car. I kept looking at that car you were driving, and I'm kind of a car guy myself. And it sure didn't look like a car that was older than, than a 215 or a 216. That's my rant for the day, Council Chair. Thank you. Mayor, would you like to respond? No response is needed. We know what he did. Muscat, please order, point of order. Go ahead, Mayor. Okay, I assume I'm unmuted. Uh, any vehicle I have was approved by city council. So show me the motion and show me the approval. I have the floor, Councilman, please. Please, point of order. So I indicated to you that I any vehicle that's purchased with uh, it is with council approval and council no. would have approved the vehicle. Show me where we approved your, show me the motion and the approval for a car for you that you're driving currently. I, I'll, I demand that you show it to us. You didn't get one. You spent $30,000 of taxpayer money for your own good. And that's ridiculous. You need to give up that car or put your resignation in. That's you need wrong. to put you know it was wrong. You, you, you need did, to put you did it in. behind our back. Madam Chair, we can't order, have a point discussion. Point of order, guys, a... both of you. Please, no, let's well, he, he can say what he wants. We know all know he's wrong. Okay. It never point came order. forward to city council. Point of order. Mayor, go ahead, please. I've already indicated. I mean, he's out of order. He he just rambles on, accuses everybody. And the heck with them. The shoe fits, wear it. Okay, and Council guys. Chair, okay. I request a motion that was brought before Council to approve a vehicle for him and the vote. And who voted? There is none, but I want to see it. He can prove it to me. I will definitely apologize to him, but there was never a vote by you him. You never Council. apologize. You just make accusations. You know what, Mr. Mayor? I, you know what? You lie. You stole from the city. You stole from I, the city. You're the liar. Grand. You're point the thief. Of, point of order, guys. Let's move on. Next, we have Councilman Wenzel. Councilman Wenzel. Oops, he's muted. Councilman Wenzel. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, yeah, I already spoke, but that's a tough act to follow. 
Okay, Councilman Abdullah. Um, yeah, <laughs> well, I um, want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and a, a happy new year. And I hope we don't have to deal with this pandemic and all the different things that we're all dealing with uh, in the future. And wish everybody's family nothing but good health. Uh, on another note, I hate to jump off like this, but based on uh, <clears throat> current statement made by Councilman Ray Muscat, I, for one, would like to concur and would like to see that motion. Uh, I didn't have the question, but now that he's brought it up, I would like to see that motion and approval by our city council, if you don't mind, Mr. Mayor, with due respect, so we can move forward with this. Thank you. And I hope my Lions win. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, is there any more comments from the council table? Madam Chair. Councilman Bell, I'm Councilman Constant. Thank you, Madam Chair. I too want to wish everyone a happy and blessed and safe Thanksgiving. I want to congratulate uh, former Councilwoman Lisa Hicks Clayton on her election and wish her good luck. Um, I hope the council and the city can move forward into this next year and get some important issues faced and done and not spend a lot of time uh, throwing stones at each other. I'm not saying anything about the most recent comments, but uh, some of the issues uh, that we face, uh, uh, the city faces as a whole. Uh, I think the um, downturn uh, as the result of the uh, coronavirus pandemic and the resulting lockdown is, is really gonna hit the state hard and I hope I'm wrong. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any further comments from the council members? This time I will move on to community announcements. I have Director Haddad, go ahead please. Whoops, hold on, we gotta unmute you. Can everybody hear me? Yep, go ahead. Okay. Um, good evening, everybody. I wanted to also wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving on behalf of myself and the Parks and Recreation Department. Um, a couple things, I wanted to let you guys know what's going on uh, within our department. Um, as you're probably aware, unfortunately, we cannot are not able to do the uh, tree lighting ceremony this year. Uh, but I, I have been on the phone with uh, Santa Claus, and he uh, came up with an idea to uh, do a Zoom with Santa Claus. We're going to do that on December 15th uh, from 5 to 8 p.m. Uh, and it's for children uh, of Dearborn Heights, all the good boys and girls, to uh, Zoom with Santa. Uh, all you got to do to register is email us at recreation at ci.dearborn dash heights dot mi dot us and the flyer is uh, online on our city web page uh, and also on Facebook. Also the other things that are happening on um, the Santa mailbox is out there uh, in front of City Hall. Uh, something new this year. Santa actually gave me some stationery. So what I did is put it online. You can print it up. Um, you can also still write a letter to Santa as well. Uh, put your address on there for the children's uh, name and address, and Santa will uh, return with a, a special letter to each uh, child that sends it in. Um, more things that are doing within the senior centers now. Um, they started a, a Zoom trivia event, uh, going to be happening on Mondays. Um, and all the information will be online tomorrow. I just got that information uh, Monday, and I forgot to put it online today or, or yesterday, but I will have that up there. Also, we're going to be starting Zoom bingo uh, eventually uh, and uh, some other more Zoom events that are happening. Um, also within the senior centers, we're going to be uh, getting some uh, plain and simple 18 inch wreaths and uh, possibly some maybe one foot or two foot tall Christmas trees for our seniors to start decorating uh, and uh, possibly hand out to um, some of our other seniors that are homebound. Uh, our uh, Senior directors, coordinators are going to be going around and delivering those once they're completed and uh, actually picking them up and delivering them to other seniors throughout the city. 
Uh, another thing they're going to be doing is uh, we're going to start a new thing called Christmas in a Bag this year. Uh, it's going to be on December 21st. I'm going to be at both senior centers, and we're looking for donations throughout the city uh, from local vendors. Um, we're still lo- we're trying to figure out some numbers on how many bags we're going to get, but it's going to be a drive through event uh, where the seniors come in, and uh, who knows, maybe Santa will be there as well, just to wish the seniors a, a, a Merry Christmas and all. And last but not least, this year, I know the city beautiful used to do this. We're going to start over again and do the holiday light decorating contest. Um, all you have to do is submit an email to the Parks and Recreation Department, uh, recreation at ci.dearborn-heights.mi.us. And we'll have a group of judges going around. Uh, let me see here. It's going to be the weekend of December 18th through the 20th. Going to go around, judge them. And uh, we're going to have some prizes. Uh, this is also sponsored by English Gardens. Just got that yesterday. They're going to donate some prizes for us to uh, hand out to these uh, uh, to the winners. So just wanted to say, give you guys all an update what's going on. And uh, we're looking at some more programs coming up for seniors and everybody else. So thank you very much. And uh, once again, have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Next, we have our new treasurer, Hicks Clayton. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I wanted to, um, if I may, through the chair, to uh, Councilman Constant, thank you, by the way. I appreciate you extending that. Congratulations. It means a lot to me. Um, I did want to tell you, I have your question that you asked. This is my day three on the job. So um, I'm going to look into that more for you, get to your answer. But I always want to encourage council members, if you have questions, to please um, email us here at the treasurer's office so we can respond promptly to you. And I wish to extend my most sincere appreciation to all of the, our residents in our community. Um, it's been an honor to serve you the last nine years as a Dearborn Heights City Council member. And I look forward to serving you as your treasurer. So with this, I want to make a quick announcement that the um, winter taxes are being mailed out on December 1st. So be watching for your winter taxes, again, being mailed out on December 1st. There's several ways you can pay. You can visit us online and see those options, but you can pay online. You can use an e-check. There is a $3 fee to use an e-check. You can use a credit card or a debit card, which is a 3% of the total bill, which is a, a fee, a processing fee. And of course we have a drop box because with COVID, you know, City Hall is um, closed right now only by appointment. And that's because of the Michigan pause, but you can use the drop box out front, but please, 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 please do not drop cash. Okay, so no cash in the drop box. We wanna make sure you don't do that. And winter taxes are due by February 15th, 2021. So it's kind of hard to say that it doesn't roll off your lips so well, but 2021 is coming up. And of course you can visit us online uh, for the Different Heights Treasurer's Office. And I too would love to wish everyone a very safe, and happy holiday season. Thank you. Next, we have Librarian McCaffrey. Hello, Council Chair and Mayor. Uh, just wanted to um, remind everyone that though, although we have are on pause uh, during this um, unfortunate turn of events, we are still going to be doing curbside service and we still offer delivery service. Uh, we did have to pull back our some of our lobby service in terms of our and our computer by appointment service uh, for the time being due to kind of a high local case count, uh, we'll, but we'll be able to help people as much as we can uh, through farm service and curbside printing uh, as we've done before. Um, but uh, yeah, that's all for now. I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving and see you in the library very soon. Thank you much. Thank you. Is there any further community announcements at this time? Okay, well, before we move on to public announce comments, I'm going to have Madam Clerk read our policies and procedures for the public comment section of our um, meeting. Okay, public comments. The procedure for addressing the council during the comment section of public comment shall be as follows. <clears throat> Any member of the public who wants to address the council shall begin doing so by stating his or her name, the street he or she lives on, and the municipality in which he or she resides. He or she shall have up to three minutes to address the council, unless the council, any member of the council, 
a city elected or appointed official or a city employee or contractor uses part of his or her allotted time by asking a question or questions or making a comment or comments. Okay, so thank you. Also to add on to that, um, since we do have Zoom now, I'd like to make it known that if you want to make a comment during public comment, I ask that you raise your hand on the Zoom application. Um, I will then lower your hand and write down your name in the order it was received. At this point, it is not necessary to raise your hand again because we acknowledge you by lowering your hand. At this point, you will wait for your turn to be called on. Um, we do ask you to turn on your video and limit it to three minutes. Uh, at this time, we have Charles Blackwell. Go ahead, please. State your name, street, and city, and you have three minutes. Uh, he's disappeared. Okay. Okay, there, oh, you know what? Let's unmute him. Can somebody get him unmuted? Sorry about that. Hold on. I did ask him to unmute, okay. I don't know. Go ahead, you're unmuted, sir. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. All right, my name is Charles Blackwell. I stay in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, I wanted to first state that I believe that the city should put out a request for a proposal for a city psychiatrist to seek a group rate and also uh, to seek out anger management classes for you all. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to state is that some of you all have treated Gary Miyake very badly. Gary has been working and doing work for the city unpaid and how many of you all will work without getting paid? And Gary has been doing work for free, I guess out of duty to serve the city that he stays in and love. And city council members have said, well, we want to see new names, but the city charter requires that that city corporation council be a resident of the city of Dearborn Heights. So I don't know how you expect to find some other marvelous greater candidate who is a resident of Dearborn Heights at a cheap rate that the city is seeking. So I think that you all should consider that as well. Thank you. Next we have Mr. Blackburn. Can we unmute him please? All right. Can Here we go. Okay, um, this is directed towards Councilman uh, Ab Abde Abdallah. Um, I want to say congratulations on being a future grandpa. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know how to say that in Arabic. Uh, hopefully you Brook. can. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, and go Lions, and that is it. Go Sorry. Lions. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, Director Hashem had his hand waving, and we don't see that on the front page if you don't use the actual hand on the Zoom, the raised part. So I'm going to call Director Hashem at this point. And I apologize, you were on the second page, and I didn't see you till I went over there to look for someone else. Uh, there you go. Go ahead, please. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair. I'm sorry I'm having a problem with my video. Um, okay. Thank you for acknowledging me. It was a public comment. I just want to let the uh, city council know that we're working closely with the mayor and the administration. We have secured another $310,000 from the CARES Act for our department, the CDBG. A public mm -hmm. hearing will take place on December 3rd, 2020 at six o'clock. And thank you, Madam Chair, for acknowledging my email that I sent to every city council member. Also, uh, Councilman Dave Abdallah did acknowledge my email as well. So if you have any questions about that, if you'd like to join our public hearing, it is listed on our public, public uh, on, under our department, uh, under public hearing notice. I uh, hope that all city council member, department heads, especially the police and the fire, 
and the uh, uh, director Haddad from Recreation will join us because they are on the budget, on the proposed budget that is. Second of all, I want to thank, I want to wish everybody happy Thanksgiving and a, and a safe one. Uh, I hope everybody's safe. I know I'm staying home for Thanksgiving as well. I'm not having a party. I'm not having relatives over. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is the CARES Act that we have going uh, at, this, at this particular time. Uh, there was an article written in one of the papers that really bombarded us with lots and lots and lots of applicants. Please spread the word that we do have money, we are taking names, and we are processing those applications as they come through. Even though with this COVID thing and us working, some of us working out of the house, but we are going to the office, we are trying to address these things. Please make sure you call us at 313-791-3500. And the last thing, Madam Chair, I wanna thank uh, Chris Klemchak, who's my coordinator for helping me and helping the department and the city of Dearborn Heights acquire all of these uh, grants that eventually help the police, the fire and the seniors and the city as a whole. Thank you everyone and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Dana Parrish. Good evening, Madam Chair, council members. Um, I wanna thank, uh, thank our council member for uh, bringing up uh, the item about the 25% uh, the, uh, pay raise I asked about that last week and was told uh, by the mayor that no such thing happened. And I'm glad that he did a little more research into that and found that that is obviously the truth and that, that obviously has happened. Hope some more research gets done into that because I know that's happened. Um, I'd like to ask Martin from uh, Plant Moran, um, are there any projections on revenue sharing as a result of a uh, $3 trillion CARES package that went out and the increase in deficits for the uh, for the uh, federal budget for next year and the years coming, and how it's going to affect revenue sharing in the states and obviously into the cities. And have we projected that into our budget and budget shortfalls for the coming years? Yes, the latest uh, projections that I've heard of, uh, the state share revenue was actually supposed to go up slightly from last year. Um, not a huge percentage increase, but it was supposed to slightly increase uh, next year. I would definitely encourage the city to uh, keep monitoring that on the state shared revenue uh, website. Um, it is updated uh, regularly, uh, but based on the latest projections, uh, it was supposed to go up. Um, the caveat I would say to that, given the shutdowns recently, and uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen with uh, uh, overall um, you know, people shopping during the holiday season, et cetera. Uh, so I'm not sure if the state sales tax are you know, going to really support the projections. So I would definitely uh, recommend the city to keep monitoring that on the website. Um, as a side note, uh, I did want to mention too, um, and I don't know if you saw me waving or not, uh, the audit technically does need to be approved by the council. Uh, it was not approved at the council meeting. Um, if it's too late to do that tonight, it does need to be approved uh, during this fiscal year or during this calendar year, so still in December. Okay. Uh I want, I wanted to, Madam Chair, um, I wanted to also tag on to item 9K regarding the July 2019 foreclosures, I believe. Um, and a lot of discussion was set around those, those, those homes. This, this doesn't directly uh, reflect that. <laughs> However, I can say, I, I again agree with Councilman Muscat in this, and that is that uh, I understand his concern about you know, the residents being upset about those homes not being taken care of and sitting there for you know, a year and a half unattended to. Um, uh, Councilman Muscat and other, other council members, uh, you gotta understand how myself and my neighbors feel about this house at 5666 Greenland Park. Uh, been sitting here for almost two decades in a wreck and the city's owned it for, uh, well, depending upon who you ask because you get different questions, but since 2015, the city's owned the, the residents, 2016, 2017, depending on who you ask. Um, and the city owns it and uh, it's still sitting there and the garage is falling down and parts of the house are falling down. So I, I, I support you, uh, Councilman Muscat and other, other council members, but uh, we've got our own rats down here, literally, absolutely literally. Thank you very much and uh, good job, uh, former treasurer Zuhair and uh, Everyone have a safe and happy uh, 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 holiday season and stay, uh, stay healthy. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have a Nancy Breyer. Please unmute yourself. I think I'm unmuted. Is that correct? Yes, you are. <laughs> Nancy Breyer, Colgate Street, Dearborn Heights. I'll make it kind of short and, and uh, we'll get it done. Uh, I wish to thank Brian and Kim from Parks and Recreation for thinking and working on behalf of our seniors. I know that Kim's been working on bus programs and everything else and Brian's just come across with a lot of neat things. And I, I really appreciate all the efforts you from City Hall, the council are, are doing on behalf of our seniors. And one other little thing, we did try Zoom trivia yesterday. And there weren't many of us, but it was a lot of fun. So I recommend that everybody try to participate in that. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Zuer Abdelhawk. Good evening again. 354 Rosemary. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, just uh, to respond to Dana Parrish, I did FOIA the papers from CDBG, the salary increase of 25% of one of the employees. I do have the letter from Mr. Joe Hashim, and I do have the letter from the mayor to the controller asking her to raise his, his salary 25%, basically $5 an hour. And out of respect, to the gentleman who is, I consider a friend of our family, I did not publish him on the internet. So I don't wanna show, but the mayor knows what I'm talking about. So basically he did violate the charter. He went behind your backs. And if the city council wishes to see those letters, I have him in my possession. And he can ask Chrissy that I FOIA those. A second thing, uh, the 1% administration fee, we collected last year $1.2 million. The treasurer budget is 5.4, The assessor is around 260,000. So you're looking around 800,000. And by state law, this money is strictly to be used to collect the taxes, process it, and if there is any litigation, they spend out of it. In my estimate, I went around seven years back to find out that it's always been 1%. We collected the close to $7 million. We spent around $5 million. I would like the mayor to tell me, and John and the controller, what happened to the $2 million? Do we have another CSO project here or what? And thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any further discussion from the audience? Oh, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I do have here. Um, Councilman Muscat. Uh, I just want to say uh, to Mr. Parrish, uh, I, I did have the same concerns about those properties as Councilman Abdella, but he was the one that raised them all, and uh, it wasn't me, it was Councilman Dave Abdella, and I thank him for it. Next, we have Vince. Hi, uh, Vince Trapkowski, yeah, Columbia Street, Street Wayne County, Michigan, Dearborn Heights. My question is regarding the golf course. Um, is there any dollar figure on what the golf course generated this year? And where is that money going to go? Did you hear me? Heard you perfectly, but nobody's responding. Hmm. And the mayor's got his phone muted. Okay. That's so I'm wondering if any of that money could go towards the uh, the, the police center. department or oh. the recreation department to bring another uh, program. Chris, um, Mrs. Laszlo, hold on, let me unmute her. She had her hand up, so okay, there you go. Ahead. Really, really quick and really, really quietly. Um, uh, they um, there is a um concessionaires agreement that we get a certain amount from the golf course. 
we can what get it? paperwork to council um but it's not a um it's not a percentage it's up to a certain amount that money then is um spent on certain repairs and then it goes into other funds we can get that and i think council should have a study session um to show what they brought in because they do have to provide that to us i don't think we've got that yet but it is a certain amount we get we don't get a percentage hopefully that answers your question we get a percentage or we do not get a percentage we get a certain amount okay and nobody knows what that amount is no i do we have an amount i don't know offhand we do have an amount that we're supposed to get with COVID. we did waive that monthly fee i think a couple months in on um, may and june and that and that amount can be given to you we don't have a current we have our current comptroller wouldn't know that because he just started, but we can get that amount. I can go into the BSNA tomorrow and we can get what we have today. The breakdown from the golf course is something that they provide us at the year end. Okay, that'd be nice to know at, uh, at the next meeting if that'd be uh, possible. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh huh. Everybody have a good holiday. Thank you. Next we have uh, Director Haddad. No, I was just gonna answer the same question uh, Chrissy Laszlo answered. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any further comments from the audience? Kit, this time, Does someone want to make the motion? I move, to, I move to adjourn. Second. 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 Okay. Second by Councilman Bazzi. All those in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Have a good night.